Hey everybody, all right, here we go. Pardon my gravelly voice, still sick. All right, so here we're going to get you through all the steps to do your first assignment. Now let's start by going to the lecture slides from uh, yesterday's class, yesterday when I'm making this, that is, uh, into files, lecture slides, January 24th. There were a lot of slides yesterday, I apologize. 73 to be precise, but if you go right near the end, you will see I have the steps to do all of the stuff that we're about to do. <clears throat> all right, here are those steps. So first step, get some text to analyze. So I've decided for this experiment, you will perhaps remember in class, <clears throat> I like Virginia Woolf, uh, and I had a type token ratio experiment with a bunch of Virginia Woolf stuff, but it was actually missing two. So just for this experiment, I'll show you how to put in the two of the novels that I didn't have in my chart. So those will be the two that I find. Um, okay, so find an electronic text. Right. So let's go to my website and to the course page, which has all the links that we need. All right, some of the key links. So I actually happen to know that Project Gutenberg Australia is where I want to go, but let's say actually I didn't know. So I'm looking for Virginia Woolf, night and day, full text, something like that. Google would probably tell me where to go. So actually this is one that I can get on Project Gutenberg. That's always good. Um, you can see it's available on different sites like ebooks, .adelaide.edu. This is actually a good site. They have lots of stuff. Um, one of the problems, though, is that it's uh, it's not always uh, available in like as clean a format as on Project Cooper. It might be like in multiple pages, so you need to cut and paste. Yeah, like here, um, they've got this. No, actually, it is all on one page. That's good. So I'll show you just so you can see how to do it from a less ideal source. So I'm going to do the same thing that I would do in any of these things, steps, right? Get it open in your web browser. I'm using Chrome, by the way. It's probably a pretty good idea for anything in this class to use the Chrome browser, which is on Windows and PC and everything else. It just works well with all this stuff, especially stuff we'll do later in the semester. Okay, so I've got it open in my web browser. Now I'm gonna do the select all and copy from the edit menu of the browser. Edit. <clears throat> select all and copy okay good next step says open a plain text editor like sublime text create a new file and paste in the text so let's not just use one like sublime text let's actually use sublime text you'll see that it's linked here from the syllabus so you can download it um, and install it and it'll know what operating system you have if you're Windows or Mac so I already have it installed, so I'm just going to open it up. And I do, like I said in the slide, new file. And then I already copied the thing that I want to put in here, so I'm going to paste it in. So, paste it in. Remove any header or footer information contained in the file, anything that isn't part of the text that you want to analyze. So you, you actually notice that in Sublime Text, you'll see, okay, at the end of the file, things look pretty good. It's just this web edition was published by that I don't want, so I just select it and delete it. And I'm going to scroll up to the top, and there's quite a bit of stuff here that I would say is not the novel. I'm just going to select it, go up to the top. Oh, actually, I Probably don't want the chapter name of the first chapter, just the table of contents and the header stuff. So delete. Okay, so now everything in here is just the novel. This is Virginia Woolf's second novel, by the way. One of those ones that I said is more standard, although it is still very good. All right, now save the file somewhere you'll remember it on your desktop and give it a memorable name so that you won't forget what it is. All right, so I'm going to go save as... I am going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to make a new folder that's called like TTR, maybe something like 287 assignment number one. And I'm going to call this, like I like this, 
this naming convention, name of author, space, dash, dash, name of text, night and day, dot txt. You gotta put in that extension so that your computer knows it's a plain text file. Save. All right, done. I can close this now because it is saved. Okay, now let's get the other one that I wanted, which is Mrs. Dalloway. Virginia Wolf, Mrs. Dalloway, full text. Let's see what the hits are. Looks like this one is also available on Adelaide eBooks. I know it's also some other places, like it's on Project Gutenberg Australia. So why don't I just um, why don't I go there and show you how to find it there? Project Gutenberg Australia. Project Gutenberg Australia, like Project Gutenberg Canada, is very old looking. It's very, very 1990s. Um, it's kind of cute. Think of it that way. Dalloway Wolf. There it is, Mrs. Dalloway. And it loads up looking kind of like this. All right. So same steps. Edit and select all. Remember, these are just all the same steps that we've already done here. Edit, select all, and copy. So, <coughs> copy into Sublime Text, create a new file, and paste it in, and then go to the top and bottom to make sure that um, there's not any crap that you don't want. There we go. There we go. Those of you who know me, <clears throat> have been in my class or know Mrs. Dalloway will know that I would wonder if this is typing out the British edition or the US edition. And the fact that I can't find the phrase made her feel, oh, made her feel the fun shows us that this is a transcription of the US edition, which is kind of interesting for Project Gutenberg. Um, Anyway, just a nerdy thing. Sometimes it's interesting to know that they're actually not just one version of a text and then you're like, which version is on Project Gutenberg? All right, so we've got the thing. We're going to save it. Um, <clears throat> Virginia Wolf. This is Dalloway. Dot txt. All right, now we got two texts. So for the assignment, you're going to actually have to do more than two, right? You're going to have to do at least three. You might want to do more than that. Oh, we've got our two, just to show you how it's done. All right, done all of these things now, right, for both of those files. If I want to find them on my computer, looks, this looks a little bit differently on, uh, on PC, but same basic idea, go into the file viewer thing. And in that folder, I'm now seeing both of the text that I wanted. If I double click on them, they should open up and look like what I expect. They actually open on my Mac by default in a different program, not Sublime Text, but they look right. So the words are there, and there's no extra stuff at the end. Looking good. Great. Okay. Now go to Voyant is the next step. Back to the course page. And go to Voyant. Well, it's being a little temperamental these days because it knows I need them. Okay, so like I said, what you do is you click on this upload button here and then you can select the text that you want to analyze. I'm going to go into that folder I made. I'm going to select both at once. We'll see if it works. It didn't work in class yesterday. The way to select two things at once, I wish I could show you my hands. I hold down the, sh I select the first one, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then click on the last one I want to select and that selects both. Um, that should work exactly the same on a PC. First, select the first, hold shift, click on the last one you want. So that will work if it's two, four, six, 10, 12, any number, first and last, click open. It's kind of fun to think of what actually happens at this stage. Like it takes two very long and complicated novels uh, and uploads them onto a site. Entity too large, oh, I see. Voyant is being a baby and it doesn't want to look at things that are too large. Okay, what can we do? Um, these are too large novels. Night and day is really, really long. Maybe that's why it's uh, freaking out. Let's see if we can just do them one at a time. 
it is a bummer, but it seems like a new downgraded feature of Voyant these days. So this is perfect. This is what happens when you try to make a video. Actually, Voyant Tools is giving me a weird error. It says that the owl is dizzy. So what I'm going to show you here in real time is if this, I assume Voyant is, a, is okay. <laughs> Voyant is run by a Canadian university. Uh, full disclaimer. Therefore, maybe it's not the most reliable thing. However, I've been using it for years and I've never seen it do something like this before. So I will write to the people who run it and tell them I have been having errors. Um, but it will probably be back up by the time you do this. But just for, for good measure, I'm going to open up <clears throat> a new tab here. And I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. So if you get stuck, okay, if it doesn't work, do this. This is your backup plan. Go to Taper. This is our older interface. Go to this List Words tool. Um, say local text file and select the same file the way that you did before. Select it. Click on all words and submit. So this is going to give you the information you need here too. Um, in a slightly less pretty interface, it's just giving you an overall word list but these are the numbers you need. Unique words, that's uh, types, and these words are tokens, so let's just plug those in. Okay, so I, back here, um, so these, these instructions really do apply just to Voyant, um, but you gotta plug these into, you gotta save them somewhere. So I've given you a way of, or I've made a little template for you to record your information in. So if you go into Files, Assignment Materials, and Appendix Table Sample, I've just made, it's just a Word file, and it just has two tables in it. So I'm going to download that and open it, and it will open up in Word. So I'm just going to use this as the place that I'm going to store my, uh, my information. So um, this is... Did I start with Mrs. Dalloway? I think I did. So Mrs. Dalloway and Night and Day are going to be the two texts I'm looking at. And then here I'll record the values for those things. So going back to this, this is Mrs. Dalloway. So this is the number of unique words. I'll just take that and copy it. And so Mrs. Dalloway. That's how many types it has, types or unique words. So it looks kind of ugly. I'll just type it in myself. Seven, six, eight, eight, seven, six, eight, eight. Okay. And the total number of words is 64,434. Six, three, four, three, four. Six, three, four, three, four. All right. If I want, I can calculate the type token ratio quickly. Open up the calculator on my computer. And do the calculation seven six eight eight divided by six three four three four times one hundred. There it is. Record it to one decimal point. Twelve point one percent is the type token ratio. All right. And we'll give our friend Voyant one more try in the background. It's not going to like night and day because it's long. Okay, and we will also go back here to Tapor. And I will change the file. I'll make it look at night and day. Leave all the other settings the same. Hit Submit. Well, it's still not happy over here. Over here, will we get a result? Yes. All right. Okay, so for night and day, we have this many. One, one, two, two, one. Back to Microsoft Word, enter them. 11221, 7221. And the total number, it is of a long novel, 17372. 17372. 
I will calculate that one. One, one, two, two, one, divided by one, seven, zero, three, seven, two, equals times 100. Equals 6 point, we'll round that off to 6.6, .6, one decimal place. Um, okay, so there we have our numbers. Like, you will, you're going to do more than two, but I'll just do two for now. So, yeah, like you know, these are the non standardized values, so these are not useful, so we need to standardize them. So, we're just going to count, we're going to make them equal. We'll look at the first, uh, the total length of the shortest text, that's this one. If you had more, you know, pick the very shortest of your sample set. So the key number for us is 63,434. Okay, so let's go back to the instructions. So to calculate your text standardized type token ratios, use the TTR comparison tool link from the syllabus. All right, back to the syllabus. Did Voyant ever work? No, it didn't. I bet it's gonna work when you try this. I'll probably make a new video to show you. Oh. Okay. So TTR comparison tool is the next thing we need. So we're going to pick the, we do two files at a time. So if you got six, you got to do three different comparisons. But okay, I'll select my two files. And then say how many, what the sample size is. So that is this number, the shortest text, total length of the shortest text, six, three, four, three, four, six, three, four, three, four and click compare. And since uh, I made this tool, it works perfectly uh, and immediately. So here are our numbers, uh, 6530 <clears throat> for night and day. 6530. And 7279. 7279. Oops. See? 7279 for are the unique types for Mrs. Dalloway. The sample size is the same. I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. Paste and paste. So on the slides, I warn you, note that Voyant, or in this case paper, are going to give you slightly different numbers probably. See how different they are. Um, they're quite different, look at that, between 7688 to 7279. But since these the type token ratio comparison tool is the one you're going to be using to make comparisons, and since I, I developed the algorithm myself, I know how it works, and I think it's a good system. So these are the numbers to actually pay attention to. This step is really just to get you started and to get, get you a sense of the total length of your text. Um, so we can go ahead and calculate the standardized type token ratio now. So these two numbers, 6530 divided by 63434 is 100. So 10.3. And these numbers... Divided by six three four four times 11.4. I won't get into analyzing these numbers because we cover that in class. Um, but that's how you actually get the numbers. So that's the whole technical side of it. Um, if you want to know what it looks like in Voyant, because <clears throat> it's probably important for me to get this video out to you now and i have to go out in a couple of minutes and won't be able to do it the rest of the day um, so if voyant worked which it didn't um, you would see a page like this so you would once it loads you would click in documents and then this is where you'd get your types and token numbers so i won't redo it um, here there's the uh, the backup system of taper which as you can see works really well probably if we all tried using it at once it would it would not work uh, but it looks like a decent backup, so you can use that if you want. Okay, so once you are done, 
um, you've got all your numbers and you've uh, done your analysis, you would go to this assignment. Like I said in class, the main part of this, the technical stuff I'm showing you now is a very small part of this assignment. I mean, you have to do it, but it should be easy. And the reason I'm making this video is so that it can be, you should see, you know, how easy it is and not make errors there. Where I really want you to put your effort is to devising a good experiment um, and then reflecting on it in an interesting way. Um, so you'll see all the guidelines for it here on the assignment page, including how it's going to be graded. And then once you're done, you will come to this page and click Submit Assignment. And you will choose, well, you'll choose, I haven't written an assignment, but the first thing you'll do is pick the assignment that you wrote and attach it. And then I also want you to attach um, all the files that you analyzed. So I just have two here. But I would assign these two files and then my assignment. And you will assign whatever other things you do. And then click Submit, and you're done. Okay, it's it's always actually kind of a good thing when things go wrong in these videos. So you got to see <laughs> papers. Uh, tapers your backup. The boy on it cannot always be relied on. All right, enjoy this assignment. And if you have any questions about anything, please feel very free to email me or to come and talk to me in my office hours. Enjoy.